Welcome back to Mouster House Campers folks, this is your camper nerd Anthony Valentine. Today I'm going to be reviewing this Citroen Berlingo Roma Home. This is the R20 and the High Low model. I'm super excited today because this is the first time I've been able to get my hands on one of these new shaped Berlingos. So it's going to be a joy to tell you all about it. Of course I'll be following on with my in-depth review and with the aid of Dennis I'm doing some aerial footage and I'll also be handing you some camper buying advice. Let's get over to Dennis. So, thanks for that flyover, Dennis. So here it is, a 2013, first of the new shape Citroen Berlingo chassis that Roma Home have converted from brand new, and this is the high-low model. A particular favorite of mine, as I'm sure my regulars and past subscribers will know, the Autosleeper brand is one of my favorites for a couple of reasons, the quality, the level of trim, the upholstery, and of course the fiberglass body. And this is all the same system, as it were, that Roma Home have been employing in their factory on the Isle of Wight for the last 35 years from the same factory. But where Roma Home differ, they specialize in the small motor homes particularly the high low and the Berlingo high model. They started many years ago, I'd say 35 years ago, uh, on the Citroen C15s. Always a fiberglass shell, so of course no leaks, well built. Expensive to build in the first place. They are a premium product, but of course they do last. So much so that the Roma homes, there's lots of them around the country in scrap yards, in farm yards, where the, the leisure part as it were, the fiberglass is still factory fresh, but the front has rotted away, particularly on the early Citroen C15s, which suffered with rust, as well as uh, brake issues. But they cracked it when they first started on the, the, the earlier Berlingo, which didn't suffer from uh, rust as it were, and these are still commanding north of £20,000, even in the old shape variety. These really are a premium product. Because the Roma Home brand, their experience they bring to the table, the fiberglass body, as well as the upholstery, which is made by Premier Furnishings in Derbyshire, the same factory that supply Auto Sleeper. They're generally known as the number one brand in the country, United Kingdom. But we'll step inside shortly. So yes, this is the high-low model. Which of course I've just shown you around now in the low configuration. Um, two little clips. It's so easy I can do it with one hand on the video camera. Just one clip there, push up there. And that releases that clip. Same on the other side. One handle here to push up. Step outside. And there you have it. What a clever design. So simple, straightforward. But of course, 
when it's down in the low version you can still get under those low clearance multi-story car parks etc garages at home and of course being this Berlingo 1.6 diesel engine it drives like a car power steering electric windows air conditioning even pushing 50 miles to the gallon can you believe it 50 miles to the gallon out of a camper van that rear window has a zip so that can be taken down and that creates more sunlight inside as it were and of course you've got the ventilation on the side so we just have a quick look in the cab and there's your lovely upholstery by Premier, Premier Furnishings in Derbyshire Five speed manual, electric windows, air conditioning, CD player, power steering, remote central locking, electric windows. I'm sure Roma Home could not envisaged how it would uh, have ended up 35 years ago, converting the early ones to how they are now. So there's a 1.6 HDI turbo diesel engine. As I say, returning 50 to the gallon. And that's real world figures. Let's step inside. How's about that? Can you believe the level of comfort and what they've fitted into this? This is probably as near as you will get to the proverbial TARDIS in a camper van. What I mean by that is what everyone generally wants is all the luxury and goodies inside a camper van and facilities and large bed, but they don't want the large floor foot plan that they can't park up but this you can park up in a car car parking space so you can go under the height barriers it drives like a car you can put it in your garage inside when not in use or use it as a day vehicle a lot of these aren't even slept in they're just used as a day-to-day -day vehicle as well as a day van Fresh water, 240 mains hookup and cable, fuel filler cap. We've got the gas bottle in here, the mains hookup cable, and all the accessories are in there. And that's where it was born on the Isle of Wight. The actual bodies are made by Island Plastics. There's the fridge, it's actually got the winter cover on, so don't forget if you're using it in the summer, just undo these two little clips, remove that cowl, and that'll give extra ventilation for the pilot light when you're using the fridge on the gas. So let's get inside without further ado. Got the control panel so you 
Just some advice, you've got the control panel as with most motorhomes you can use all the leisure facilities on the leisure battery, so on this particular one that's the caravan, or you can use it on the car, which of course in this case means the van, the chassis. I would be very careful about using that folks, or only an emergency, because of course if you flatten that front battery, the engine's not going to start. So always go to the leisure and caravan battery, then you can relax, you can put your reading lights on. It doesn't matter if that leisure battery goes flat, because all you have to do then is start the engine battery and it will charge the van or car battery as well as the leisure battery. So always go to the caravan leisure battery. So simple operation, one for the pump, that's for the cold water tap there. We'll just put the work top there. That's got the fiberglass sink. Just remove that very straightforward. And that gives you access to the Fetford Porter Potty. And you can see how easy that is by me actually being able to operate the video camera at the same time. Both sides have got fold down extra kitchen space. So that folds down there. All we do here is lift this little catch latch here. That folds in between the two cushions there. And then that falls completely flat. And that's exactly the same on that side. So put that back up. As you can see there, three point forward facing seat belt same on the other side so we get rid of the seat belt fold that back into place put the cushion back and let's have a look at the hob and grill stroke oven area so two burner hob simple operation hold it a little bit tricky holding the camera but as you can see Nice blue flame, that's always what we're looking for. Anything other than a blue flame, switch it off. A little clean around there. Try again. If it's still not a blue flame, take it in for service. Let's be safe. Grill, stroke oven. And a three-way fridge. So that what means by three-way, it will work on 240 mains hookup leisure battery or 12 volt as you're driving and then gas so we put it on gas there we insert it there put the sparker the green marker is going up now that's saying that the pilot lights take it nicely then we can let go of the gas after a couple of seconds and then that will stay lit that's just going back down again because i hadn't held it long enough so we just spark up again there and then we hold that down, wait for the green dial to go completely up, and then that'll hold and that will fridge when you're wild camping. So as you can see, that's now operating perfectly fine on the thermostat. So we'll just turn that down, switch the fridge off. the Dometic fridge and freezer. Another little bit of advice. Lots of times people don't actually use the freeze department on a camper van. So what a lot of people do is just bring this little flap across and leave it permanently like that. And then you've got the cooling fins on the fridge element as well as the freezer cooler. And that creates a colder experience in the fridge. As always, You've got two types of latches, so you've got the permanent latch which holds it nice and tight. It's still magnet, so it shouldn't roll. But if you're doing the Dakar rally or going over hills, just to save that little bit of rattle, you just put the latch on and that'll hold it nice and tight. If you're leaving it stored for any amount of time, same with any domestic fridge in a house, you will get a little bit of mold or smell. We don't want that. So all we do is put it on the second latch and that creates a little bit of airflow 
and that's okay then in storage. So there's the zipper, as well as on the side to give more ventilation. So we've got the LED lights above board. Let's pop them on. They're all individually switched on and off as well. So this one has got the Pullman interior, which basically means the side has got a lovely forward and rear facing seats opposing on a mini table. Can you believe they fitted that into this size of vehicle? But also, you then put that plastic in fill into there, that just slots very straightforward into that slot and over there, and that creates then a solid base. So then you could have two opposing sofas like that one. Again, this can be removed very straightforward, just pulls out there, that creates a space there. So then that will also lead a forward facing seatbelt with the three point seatbelt there. So four people, you could use this as a family, as a, an everyday vehicle. With four forward facing seats and seat belts, or of course, you can also have it in this configuration or two opposing sofas and wait for the bed size. On the front here, this seat folds forward. That then folds over there to create the bed extension and wait for it six foot three in length even a little bit more if your feet are overhanging the extension which of course you can do with that forward seat folded down so comfortably six foot three and just under six foot wide from side to side now that folks is as near as you will get as a definition of a TARDIS in a camper van One's got over mats, over the existing row home mats. Nice lino clean floor, wipe clean. So to set up the bed, very straightforward. At the front you put four wooden slats and at the back there's a, a wood, um, not a table, but an infill that just clips onto either side here. So there's the four wooden slats. They go into there, one, two, three, one in the centre infill, and one here on the back. And then there is that infill slat for the back, and this extender fits in the front here. Just a note on the curtains, the front curtains are set up there but I do know a lot of Roma home people who have actually tweaked it and put curtain rails along the side under the visors along the front what that means is then the curtains can go completely along touching or as close as possible to the windows and that creates more space at night with the seats folded down so just an option to think about but a lot of Roma home people do that Of course it's got the blinds, the fly nets, midge nets, fully opening windows, again for ventilation you can have these fully open or just on the little latch there, so we just put them on the little latch there, that's not fully open, closed rather, but it just leaves that little bit of a to circulate then you're not getting condensation but of course you can bring it right tight in and close create a nice tight fit I'd just like to mention again my uh, buying advice particularly be very careful on the internet these days folks the golden rule if it's too good to be true it normally is there's lots of vehicles campers and motorhomes are a particular scammers favorite at the moment They've been, they're getting advertised 
for less than market price. What that means in 99% of times is there is no vehicle for sale. They've just copied and pasted some generic pictures off the internet. And then all these people with no conscience, all they're doing is collecting deposits. Normally asked to communicate via email, no telephone communication. Can your bank transfer the deposit or send it by Western Union? And then unfortunately, it's effectively a one-way valve and you will not be getting your deposit or your camper van delivered. There is no camper van or motorhome for sale in 99% of the cases. So yes, just be careful out there. Always speak to the last owner. Ask as many questions as you like. Not particularly about the camper van. How long have you owned it? Why are you selling it? What was the owner before? You can't ask too many questions. And all those will give you a clue. That's what I've been doing when I buy my campers and motorhomes. And if they can't answer the questions quickly or they're tripping up, you know something's astray and just walk away. Be safe with your hard earned money. We'll just have another little walk round. So just be careful out there. The world's all not like that. We do live in a nice world these days, but just be vigilant and careful. And here in the United Kingdom, you've got access to a lot of information with the interweb. So all you do, again, if the picture, if the number plate is hidden on the advert or the uh, particular listing on the internet, you've got to ask yourself a question why. There could be a genuine reason, but you want that registration number, ask for the chassis number and the document reference number off the V5 or the logbook, the owner's details. You can do an HPI and free of charge, you can go on the government website with that registration number and you can check the past history. So the two particular things that I think you need to check on a camper or motorhome is the mileage, because the mileage will have been recorded every year, so any discrepancies will be shown up straight away, free of charge within a few computer click strokes. Also, that will show up any advisories and any failure on previous MOTs, that will all be flagged up and look into it. If there's a few little minor advisories, a few little bits and bobs, there's a straightforward explanation and they've been rectified, there's no reason why not to proceed with the sale. But if there's lots of rust or previous welding and corrosion issues, then again, it's not completely a walk away from situation, but if the price is right um, and they have been corrected to a good standard, then it's worth investigating. But if you see on all the MOTs, corrosion and rust and failure, then I think it's time to walk again, away again, folks. Struggling to get my words out there. Right, I think you've heard my voice for long enough. We'll have a little drive now. Dennis can follow me. And then I'll see you at the end of this video. Over to you, Dennis.
again for that flyover Dennis I hope you enjoyed this review as much as I did one of my particular favorites the Roma Home R20 the first one that I've experienced with the new shape Berlingo front uh, don't forget if you click that subscribe button you'll be notified of any new videos and camper advice I can give you as well as comments are welcome down below that's all for now folks I'll catch you on the next video review